Do you know what the options are with every brush you own? Well, uh, we have a request from one of our subscribers that said, in your quick tips you've shown about using brushes and some things about strokes. Do you have any suggestions on the best way to practice how to use our brushes? I just happen to. No matter what the shape, no matter what the brush is made of, no matter whether you're working with watercolor, acrylic, oils, it doesn't make any difference. There are many, many options for every single brush you own. So rather than going through and saying, with this brush we do this, or this brush we do this, I have a list of options or things to show you about what your brushes could do. I'm just going to use one single brush, and let me make this suggestion. If, if you've not already fully explored the potential of your brush, take your brushes now one at a time and go through these exercises I'm about to show you. You will be surprised at what you might discover. So what's the first thing? The first thing is how does a brush behave when it's fully loaded as compared to sparsely loaded as compared to double loaded? All right, what's a fully loaded brush look like? Well. If I come down to my palette and I pick up color, if I have that brush fully saturated in color, you can see, if I have that brush fully saturated in color, that's a fully loaded brush. So a fully loaded brush would make a mark like that. When you put the mark down, you're going to have plenty of paint. A sparsely loaded brush will be just the opposite. A sparsely loaded brush, but just that, will do that. So if you have a sparsely loaded brush, you're going to get the texture underneath the canvas or the paper rather than a full coverage. So it's a good idea to practice with the various amounts of paint in the brush to see exactly how that brush behaves when you apply that particular amount of paint. So the first rule of thumb here, be aware of how much paint is on your brush. Now, there's the double loaded brush. A double loaded brush can be a wonderful thing. What does that mean? It means that somewhere on the brush you pick up two colors. So I might pick up a green on that side of the brush, and I might pick up a red or a pink on that side of the brush, and look what this would give me. That would give me this wonderful mixture of green and red or green and pink. So that would be something that you might experiment with. You might lo double load the brush by double loading it on each corner like I just did or you might load one side of the brush with one color and the other side of the brush with another color. So now you've got two colors on the brush. When you stroke that brush with those two colors, well let's come right here you see what happens. You'll get all kinds of variations that will give you results that are wonderful and spontaneous. So being aware of how much paint is on the brush is your first, the first thing that you want to explore and how your brush behaves with that amount of paint on the brush. Now, there's some thing, other things that your brush will do depending on how, uh, how much paint you have on the brush. So I'm going to now assume that my brush is relatively well loaded and let's look at some, some things you can explore and if you you know you could you could pause this 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 video and you could copy these things down and take yourself through this exercise with every single little step here you might be surprised at what you'll discover about your brush so explore what the brush will do on its belly at various angles the, br the brush's belly is this part right here. The tip of the brush, of course, is this part right here. They both have different functions. So, if I were exploring the an various angle of the brush's belly, I would load the brush on its belly. I would load the paint on the brush's belly like that. And here's what I would do. I would say, okay, what will the brush's brush do if I have it almost parallel to the canvas? If I have it almost parallel to canvas and give it somewhat push, this is what happens. What will the brush do if I have it, let's, let's reload it. What will the brush do if I have it 
at a sort of 45 degree angle and push. You see, this will show me what will happen. You'll see that the, the paint flows off the brush a little bit differently, no matter what, uh, according to the angle that you have it. A lot of people will do this. A lot of people just, just keep their brushes at a perpendicular angle like this, and, and the brush ends up not getting explored to its full potential. Well, ask yourself if some things might do well with that angle. So try that angle. What do you get? And you see, it's more the feel of the brush than anything else. So be aware when you're doing this on its, on its belly almost parallel to the canvas, uh, uh, giving a slight angle, about a 45 degree angle to the canvas and perpendicular to the canvas and various angles in between with various amounts of paint, you'll discover what your brush will do. Be, be aware while you're doing these things, be aware of what's actually happening in the brush in between the brush and the paint. So, what will the brush do on its tip? This is a flat brush I have. Any one of the brushes, flat, oval, uh, which is called the filbert, for example, uh, or fan, it doesn't matter which brush, they all have different things that the tip will do. Alright, so once again I'll load it, and, and when loading it for the tip, uh, for what the tip will do, it's a good idea to load it and then pull it at a sharp, pull it into a sharp uh, shape like this. Now, at, on its tip I can hold the brush perpendicular to the canvas, give it a slight pull with my arm, and I can get a little thin line. If I tilt the brush this way and push it down, I get a different kind of line. In this case, kind of a broken line. Or if I tilt it in the same way on its tip and pull it up, push a little bit, I get that kind of line. Now, if I have enough paint in the brush, I might be able to get a, 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 a more definitive line. So, practicing having just the tip of the brush flow over the canvas, and you'll see if the canvas is wet, those lines will do a little, a little bit different thing. Push it a little bit harder, get a little thicker line, and so on. So you can get all kinds of linear things to happen with just the tip of the brush. Now there's something else that you could do with the tip of the brush, and that is if you use the tip of the brush by pushing it against the canvas and then pulling it up and giving it a flip, like that, then you'll find out You'll find out, let's show you just a little example right here, if you have like a dark, dark area of paint, like that, and if you load the brush, double load it in this case, and pull it kind of flat, if you, if you hold the brush and you pull up and give it kind of a flip, you can make little, air, little textures that can imitate like little grass strokes and things like that. So exploring what the tip will do, the tip uh, turned in this direction and moving up, or the tip turned in this direction and moving up. So the tip has lots of potential. So, what about the speed of the brush, the speed of moving the brush, and all these things on its belly, on its tip. You can drag it slowly. You can drag the brush slowly, so if I get it fully loaded, if I drag the brush slowly, I might get this kind of effect. I can feel, when I drag it slowly, I can feel how that brush, or how that brush is depositing the paint. That's very important. If I drag it faster, I can get that. So the, the speed with which I move the brush is going to give me a certain way of the brush behaving. So drag it slowly, drag it rapidly. Practice moving both ways and see what it will do. Now, twisting and pulling. So, again, I can load the brush and get um, a good amount of paint on the brush. What do I mean by twisting and pulling? If I'm in the middle of doing something, regardless of, of the angle, its tip, the various angle I might have, uh, I'll have the brush placed against the canvas or the surface, or whether I'm working with the tip, or whether I'm working with the belly, I can twist and pull. Now, what does that mean? I can, as I'm moving the brush, I can twist it like this and pull like that. I can twist it in numerous ways to make it do what I want it to do. Twisting it. And I find that a lot of times 
what I'm doing right here with twisting and twisting and turning the brush is as important as my pulling the strokes against the surface itself. So twisting and pulling, but what about twisting and pushing? All right, let's look at that. Uh, um, and so if I might come right down here, I would be maybe pushing the brush and twisting. And you see, I get something totally different. Totally different way that the brush would ha behave if I am pushing as I'm twisting. So twisting and pulling, pulling the brush and pushing the brush are two wonderful ways to explore its potential and see what it can do for you. And then alternating sizes. Now, this uh, this this little this tech this brush technique or brush m maneuver you might call it is often when we're doing we would use when we're doing skies or or we're doing a surface where we have a broad area of paint and so we might do something like um, overlapping a uh, lot pulling a stroke and then overlapping that stroke in another direction going within the stroke pulling another stroke and overlapping the stroke you see what I'm doing here. I'm pulling one side of the brush for one stroke and then I can flip it over for the other. I can pull one side of the brush for one stroke and I can flip it over for the other. I could not, I don't have to do that. I can just simply move the brush from side to side and alternate the direction of the stroke, which also helps to give me a wonderful, a wonderful uh, surface. But I could do it both ways. I can either move the brush in alternating directions or I can move the brush in with alternating sides sort of like that turning it in my hand turning my hand uh, so that the belly of the brush is uh, on one side and the next stroke of the belly of the brush is on the other side something like that depends upon what you're doing so the next thing beyond this is how do you apply these strokes if you explore your brush whatever brush, how many dozens of brushes you have, if you explore all, explore them, them in all these ways, you will discover they have all kinds of potential so that when you're in the middle of a painting, uh, you, will, you can read the subject that's in front of you and know how to move that particular brush to make it give you what you want to interpret what you have in front of your eyes. So, I hope you found that helpful. If you have something that you'd like for me to explore in a quick tip, we have a comment section right down here. Leave your comment and make your suggestion, and we'll put that on the schedule. Check out our full-length videos on dianemise.com. Read the descriptions, read the titles, see if something there might just interest you. And there's your quick tip.